Hi friends, Sharon Thomas here from Established Footsteps Ministry, and I'm excited to share with you today about a new Bible study resource tool that we're gonna be using in our Me and My Bible Study. It's called Bible Study Mirror. So uh, sometimes during week four especially, we might switch out the tool and we might develop some new ones along the way. I told you that in the beginning of the study as you got started with us. And so this is gonna be one of those times. We'll probably come back to this tool another time uh, during the year for our study, but definitely for week four of the month of April, we're gonna use this tool called Bible Study Mirror. It's just much more conducive to the passage that we've been in for um, April versus the one we normally use in week four, which is called Bible Study Soul Workout. So I wanna spend just a few moments telling you about how to use it, helping you get acquainted with it. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. But I think you're gonna find this to be really special and rich as you dig into these mirrors. So we think about what does a mirror do? A mirror reveals. And what happens, because God used many different people to write his word over the course of many, many years, uh, there's, there's sections of scripture that really just fit together, that really mirror each other. And sometimes when you've been in a passage meditating on it for a while, like we have been with Matthew 26, 27 and 28, if you were with us for March and April of Me and My Bible, or maybe you were just doing this for April, and in your case, you would be most of chapter 27 and 28. But we've been in those chapters, right? We have been digging in and studying them and meditating on them. So now we can go back to some of these other passages that maybe we're already familiar with that talk about Jesus being on the cross. Maybe there's some of the prophetic passages back in the Old Testament about that, or maybe some in the New Testament. I've chosen some of them for us, but you know what? There are so many more. So feel free if you want, as you get going, you can make additional boxes on the back of the page and add in some other passages that are definitely mirrored to Christ's time um, on the cross and resurrecting from the dead and all that that means. And we know there's such a wealth of what that means, right? So what do you do? Well, you basically have a main passage. You can, you can see that right here, a main passage. I already filled that in for you in the copy of this Bible study mirror that you'll get in your email. And it says Matthew 26 through 28. That is our main passage, all right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and these boxes, and there's eight of the boxes, so there's only seven days in a week, so you're gonna have to double up on some of them. And I would suggest the smaller boxes are for the smaller passages. So maybe you'll do a couple of those together. The bigger boxes have longer passages in them. You might wanna reserve those for you know one a day, but just do it in a way that works for you. You might not get to all the boxes, or like I said, you might add some additional boxes on the back. The main thing that you're trying to do is to, first of all, you want to, and it tells you right here in the instructions that you'll see right below that blue box, it says to read the focus passage. Now I know you've already read the focus passage many times because you've been in it for two months, right? But I want you to read it through as a whole, to just see it as one big piece versus how we've been looking at it in little sections and, and um, things in our study. So you just read that through. I would suggest doing that on the first day. And then the next day, you'll pick one of the boxes. Uh, you might wanna come out and start over here on the left-hand side at the top. And that one says Isaiah 53, um, three through 12, and it's probably a passage that you've heard before. It's definitely a prophetic passage of Christ, and I wanna turn there, I had it marked, but I'm having a hard time getting to it. Uh, okay, yeah, so um, starting in verse three, you'll recognize this passage probably. It talks about Jesus in a prophetic way. It says he was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. And the passage goes on. So this is a prophetic passage of Jesus spoken long before he was ever even born on the earth, but really speaking into what were the dynamics going on inside of, of Christ's heart and his mind during the time that he was on the cross? Well, we've been studying about when he was on the cross. And so to be able to have that backdrop so 
um, so clear in your mind after a month or two months of studying and then to now go back to these mirror passages and read them again and give the Holy Spirit free reign to, to speak to you. And I can't tell you what he's going to speak to you. And maybe it's just going to be that you see that closer connection, you get a little broader understanding. I don't know. But I would encourage you, as I have been through this whole study, before you begin each and every day, that you hold your Bible either up in the air or close to your heart and you make that declaration. This is my Bible. I believe what it says about God. I believe what it says about me. And, and you know how it goes from there. Uh, if you need it, we always have it available for you on our website or usually at the tops of the emails that we send. But you make that declaration and you invite the Holy Spirit into that time. And as your directions say here, you're going to look up these mirror passages, uh, noted at the top of each box, and then you're going to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the connections, to show you where they mirror each other, and to give you the details. Because that's what a mirror does, right? It gives more detail. When I look in the mirror, I can tell if I have food in my teeth. I can tell if, I, if some of my hair is out of whack and looking funny, right? I mean, we can see things in the mirror. And so as we look at these mirror passages, we're just asking the Lord to show us more. Show us the details. And maybe it's a detail that will encourage. Maybe it's a detail that will correct. Maybe it's a detail that will cause you to just sit in awe of who God is. Maybe it's a detail that will give you more clarity for um, you to be able to really um, grab hold of the gospel story. I don't know, but that's kind of the beauty of the whole thing. You look in the mirror and you get to see the details. And so I think this can be a really rich way, especially once you have been studying God's Word and really grounding yourself in it to then go back to some of the mirror passages and read them again, even if you're familiar with them, and then see how they connect. So what do you fill out in the boxes? Just whatever, whatever gets impressed upon your heart as you do, whatever it is. And you know what? I, I can't prescribe that. I can't manufacture it for you. I don't know exactly what that's going to be. I don't know exactly what it's going to be for me either as I do this because I have not done the exercise myself yet. I do it right along with you um, each and every week of this study. So I do think though that the Holy Spirit's going to just bring some things up in our minds, illuminate certain parts of passages and, and cause your mind to quicken back to the detail in Matthew 26 through 28 that maybe this mirrors with and just bring about a greater sense of awe and thankfulness and understanding of our salvation that we have because Christ did go to the cross and resurrect for us. So please know that I'm going to be praying for you as you uh, begin to work your way through and throughout the week as you're working your way through this tool, Bible Study Mirror. And again, if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out and we'll do our best to come alongside you and help you work through whatever your question is. So I do want to mention as well that we will be starting a new month the following week and I'll be in touch about that in the coming week. So um, just be on the lookout for that as well as a message that I'm going to be sharing with you um, from our passage for the month of April. So God bless you as you study God's word. I'll be in touch again soon. See ya.